Good. Thank you for the invitation, Steve Warbis. Thank you, Mr. Murat and Katia. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'll be presenting the Brazilian Pig Air Outlook. I hope you enjoy. Okay. So, uh, starting with a brief presentation of Kentron. Kentron is a Brazilian family owned company established in 1992. We work in the commercial area of more than 38 pig atom producers, taking care about their sales, their contract, logistics, uh, documents, everything that concerns the sale. And today we are the largest pig atom sales company in Brazil. We are doing per year more than 2.5 million tons of pig atom, including domestic and export market. And in 2020, uh, Cantron will be responsible for 50% of all Brazilian merchant pig atom exports realized in Brazil. Okay, so let's start our presentation. Uh, we work with the basic pig atom foundry and nodular pig atom. Uh, we supply the Brazilian foundries, steel plants, and also on the export side, foundries and steel plants. Let's talk about the merchant pig atom monthly production in Brazil. This number is from November 2020, okay? We are producing around 500,000 tons of pig atom, merchant pig atom per month, okay? This number is not considering integrated plants, okay? Uh, so if we have this number times 12, we have per year around 6 million tons of merchant pig atom produced in Brazil. So, taking this 500,000 tons of pig atom, we have 82% corresponding for basic pig atom to attend these two plants, okay? This is for 410,000 tons of pig atom every month, while 18%, which is 90,000 tons of nodular and foundry pig atom. As you can see, the great majority of the production is basic pig atom. Talking about this basic pig atom, 39% stays in the domestic market every month, 160,000 tons, while 61% goes to exports, 250,000 tons. Talking about the Nodler and Foundry Pig Adam, very brief, briefly, uh, from the volume of 90,000 tons, 67% is the opposite of the basic pig Adam. It stays in the domestic market, 60,000 tons every month, while 33% goes for exports. Uh, I'll talk to you about some characteristics of the Brazilian merchant pig atom. Okay, our pig atom is made by charcoal as heat source. Okay, we do not use coking coal for our merchant pig atom. Charcoal comes from the eucalyptus trees, from reforestation programs. Okay, and it's a renewable source, so it's very important for the environment. Uh, the, the use of charcoal in our production. Another point is the size or the volume of the blast furnace. Here in Brazil, the blast furnace are smaller in comparison with the coking coal blast furnace. Okay, due to the physical composition of the charcoal, we cannot use big blast furnace. So our blast furnaces are designed and structured for charcoal use. We can only use very small, very small percent of the coking coal if necessary, five up to maximum 10%. Here we have uh, the charcoal production slide, okay? Here on the top on the left, we have the charcoal farm. Uh, we have the trees, we cut them, the eucalyptus trees. We move this material uh, to the battery of ovens. We stuff these ovens, the, the wood stay there for six, seven days. And after this period, we have the charcoal ready for go or to the steel plant. Uh, sorry, to the pig atom producers, or is the same one that we use on a, on a barbecue. Uh, here on this slide, we have the Brazilian map. You can see here on the red points, the concentration of pig atom producers, okay? And on, on the yellow points, we see the port facilities. We used to say that Brazil has two systems uh, of export, okay? The north system on the top, and the south system here and down the, the map. The north system, uh, it concentrates here, okay, at Pará and São Luís state, and they use São Luís and Belém Itaqui port to export. Due to the geographic position, this material used to go mainly to US and Central America, okay? 
and we here we have this big gap there's no connection between the north and the south roads and railway are not good for for this movementation so this material here mainly goes for exports okay here in the south we have this big concentration at Minas Gerais state and some other producers here at Vitoria state. Those producers, they can attend a strong domestic market here in Brazil going to the south and they can use Rio de Janeiro port, a sul port or Vitoria port for export. Here on the left side, we have almost close to the Bolivia border and other producers that they can all attend the domestic market or we can move this material produced here down to the Paraguay River up to Argentina port, okay? Or we can also move by truck uh, up to Rio Janeiro port for exports. So here we can see the North system and the South system. Good, moving forward, we have the, this slide about how we export the pig iron. So here we have the pig iron plant the material comes out from the blast furnace and goes to the stockyard. We move this material by truck into a inland terminal. Okay. When we consolidate this cargo at this inland terminal, we move by train up to the port where we load the vessel and we export with water. As I said, Brazil has two systems of export, the north system and the south system. The north system is kind of new. It started on late 80s. Okay, and the peak of exports was around 2006. While the South system, it's more traditional, it has more than 60, 70 years of uh, operation. And the peak of exports happened in 2005, approximately. It's important to say here that around 2008, uh, we had the financial crisis in US. Okay, and then uh, due to the price reason, the price dropped dramatically. Uh, many, many producers in Brazil shut down their blast furnace and they never return, okay? However, we are watching in the recent years a movement uh, of increasing again the big iron exports here in Brazil, mainly in the south. You can see here in four years, five years uh, period, but we also watching a recovery here uh, on the north system. Okay, uh, but what are the key factors of this big annual export increase number? Okay, the domestic market here demand was very weak. The, the steel plants they are not using demanding the same amount that they used to demand uh, five ten years ago. Also, our currency is devaluating. It's favorable for exports. Okay, so it's keeping the numbers very high because it's attractive the export. So the production level of Brazil merchant pig iron was very high. Another point that's important to mention, it's because in the CIS, we saw a merchant pig iron production reduction. Okay, so uh, CIS producers, they are able to produce these two products or they can produce basic pig iron and they can choose what is better for them to produce pig iron or steel products. So they, they choose for steel products. So their offer of uh, the availability of uh, basic pig iron, it's reducing. Here, thanks to steel orbis, we have this chart uh, of the iron ore cost and freight prices, China. This is 62% FE content, okay? And it's important to mention here that two year, almost two years ago, uh, January of 2019, the iron ore was around 70 US dollars, okay? And this morning, this is a fresh number for you. Uh, it reached 133.05. So uh, it's a huge increase, almost, sorry, uh, almost 90% increase of the, uh, the prices. Moving on, we have this chart of the basic pig iron export FOB prices. This is FOB Brazil, okay? It's important to see here uh, increase on the prices during the year of 2008, okay? However, very fast, faster than the increase, we, we, we had the US financial crisis and the price collapsed 
very, very, really fast. So many, many producers left the market after, after this period. It's important to say here that we just crossed the barrier or 400 US dollars FOB. Okay, this is a number that we didn't see since 2010, 2011. And the last deal here in Brazil done last Friday was 425 FOB. So we crossed this 400 barrier here. But what are the pig iron challenges? Okay, what are the challenges for the pig iron industry in Brazil? First, as we saw, the iron ore are on a high level in the international market. Okay, with that, increase the, comp the competition, not only with the Brazilian steel mills, however, with the big miners. Okay, because big miners, they buy the iron ore from small miners that usually uh, supply steel plants and, and pig iron producers. However, those big mines are buying their production and blending to, to export to China since the price is very attractive. So we are facing uh, a reduction on the availability of iron ore for the pig iron producers. And when you reduce the availability, the price increased and increasing the price, you increase your production cost. So this is a challenge that we are facing, okay? Another point is do some recent accidents that we had here in Brazil, 2015 in, in Mariana, 2019 in Brumadinho. We are facing some difficulties to release new products of iron ore mines. The government is not renewing old license and not even re uh, uh, giving new license for new projects. So we are facing this problem, okay? And another point that's important to, to highlight is most of basic pigano producers here in Brazil, they do not own the raw material chain. They do not, run, they do not own the farms to produce the charcoal, okay? They do not produce their own charcoal or they do not own the mines to produce their own iron ore. So we stay exposed to the market price which is very dangerous for those uh, variations very fast. Well, this year, it's been a very tough year for all of us, okay? I hope you and your families, uh, you're safe, but uh, soon we will be safe of this. Uh, things are getting better again, okay? What are the impacts of the COVID-19 period uh, to the Brazilian crude steel production? This, I thank you. Uh, steel orbits for this information also okay this is a monthly crude steel production from brazil since october 2018 up to uh september 2020. we see here due the period of uh covid19 okay we are facing that but it, it started in march we saw a big decrease on the crude steel production okay however we saw the demand of the, the, the population increasing and this steel production start to increase. And on September, uh, in fact, August, uh, July, we saw those numbers recovering again to the same period before the pandemic. So we believe that even after September, October, November, the production will keep going up, okay? You, you, it's important to mention here that since I don't know, I've been in this in industry for 12 years. Uh, Brazil in 2020 is importing vessels of scrap from US, from Canada, and it never happened, at least as I know. Uh, it's importing one vessel of pig iron from Ukraine. So Brazil, the famous exporter of pig iron is importing one vessel of pig iron from Ukraine, okay? So what are the impacts on the Brazilian pig iron market with the COVID-19. First, the demand stopped almost over, okay? So the weak demand we, we faced and the international demand happened the same. Steel mills and foundries, they were out of the market for a while. However, China didn't stop. In fact, the opposite. They increased their participation on the pig iron market, okay? So the pig iron producer, uh, production thanks to China was not affected in Brazil. So let's talk about this China entrance in the market. The first big iron cargo from Brazil to China happened in September of 2019. Okay, so almost one year ago. And, China, and Kentron was responsible for that sale. 
So what are the key factors of this, of that entrance? First, uh, we saw some import restrictions for the scrap. So China uh, stopped the, the import of scrap. Okay, with that, it, the, the domestic scrap in China uh, kept in a high level. Second, we are watching day by day, year by year, increasing of the environmental regulation in China. Okay. Also, the, the, the iron ore price level is too high. Okay, so it's cheaper for a plant, uh, for a steel plant to buy pig iron to produce the, the steel instead of producing with the iron ore. And also, we are watching this movement, not only in China, but in the whole world, the increasing number of electric furnace. Okay, so uh, steel plants, they are changing their structure of furnace from integrated plants to electric plants. So they are uh, reducing the consumption of iron ore uh, and increasing the consumption of scrap and pig iron. So uh, this chart here, we have the Brazilian pig iron exports number. In 2018, Brazil exported 1.8 million, almost 1.9 million, and China represented 0% of that volume. Okay, China didn't buy anything. So this, this production, the, this export number, 1.8 million, went everything for other countries. However, in September of 2000, 2019, we saw China coming to the market, okay? So 2.8 million tons were exported in 2019 uh, from Brazil, and China represented 10% of that volume, okay, almost 300,000 tons, and the balance 2.5 went to other countries. Now, in 2020, we saw China representing 67% of all Brazilian pig iron exports. So China represented from a number of 3.7, almost 3.8 million. I'm, I'm already considering uh, December shipments here. So uh, 2020, we will have this number of 3.7, almost 3.8 million tons exported from Brazil. So China represented 67% of that volume, 2.5 million tons, and other countries uh, imported 1.2 million from Brazil. So to summarize the last chart, we see here in the red line, China coming from zero in 2018, going to almost 300,000 tons in 2019 and going to 2.5 million in 2020. In the blue line, we have the other countries participation. So from 1.8 million to 2.5 million. However, with the COVID-19, uh, the pandemic period, this number decreased to 1.2 million. Okay. And the red line, uh, sorry, the green line here, we have the total Pigano exports from Brazil. So 1.8 to 2.8 million, we have increase of 50%. Then from 2019 to 2020, we had another increase of 35%. Okay, good. Moving forward, what are the big other expectations for the future? We believe that global economies will recover. Okay, US and Europe, uh, we believe for the next year, they will return to the pig iron market because this year due to the pandemic, they were out and reduced a lot their demand of pig iron. Another point uh, that we expect is the soaring market responding to the, the poll question. We believe that the market will keep very firm for the next months. We believe for the first quarter of 2021, a very firm market. And we also believe that the second quarter will be also good. After that, it's impossible to predict. The market changed a lot, uh, and it's better not to, to predict what could happen later. So we believe that the metallics, pig iron, scrap, and steel products, they will keep very firm uh, for the next months. OK? Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's what I had for today. I would like to thank you, everyone, for this possibility. Those are my contacts here. So oh, thank you very much, Mr. Fragosa, for your great presentation. Um, I would like to remind uh, our audience that we uh, have a Q&A box where you can type uh, the questions to our speaker. Um, let me uh, look if we have uh, some uh, 
any from our audience as of now? Uh, yes, we have it. Uh, Mr. Fragosa, let me ask you, please, the question that we got from audience. Uh, China is planning to allow scrap imports next year. Uh, what do you think the impact on their uh, basic pig iron imports will be? Well, uh, we have to wait, okay? Uh, let's wait then to, to, to release this scrap import again. However, the market will find the balance and adjust again. Uh, we, in 2020, we didn't see U.S. and, and European countries uh, importing more pig iron. So if China decides to, to import again scrap, the market will find the, the correct adjustment. Uh, and we believe that uh, U.S. and European countries could return uh, to find the, the correct balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, may I ask, uh, Mr. Fragosa, what alternative destinations do you see uh, except uh, China and U.S. for Brazilian pig iron uh, exports? Okay, well, we have South America, which is uh, a very important uh, area for us. We have Central America. We also have uh, Italy and Germany as a, a big importer of big iron. Uh, Southeast Asia, Taiwan, uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, uh, what else, Thailand, used to be also good importers of big iron. So those are the main destinations for, for our products. Mm -hmm. I see, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Fragosa, uh, despite you uh, don't wish to predict the price trend uh, <laughs> for the nearest future, uh, may I ask you, uh, do you expect uh, the same effect uh, which happened in 2018 year uh, when the prices skyrocketed and then collapsed? So do you expect it after, uh, in the second half uh, of uh, approaching year? Okay, well, the 2020 was a unique year uh, and we didn't expect for that. So, of course, uh, we will have impacts on the, on the market and we will see the impacts also in 2021. I believe uh, that the prices will keep going up, okay, because the iron ore just reached, as I mentioned, 133 uh, US dollars in China. So it's a, a historic peak. We, we never saw uh, iron ore at that level. It's two products. We, we are watching the, the, the increased demand. So we believe that the prices will keep going up. However, the same thing that happened in 2008, I think it's, it's very hard to, to predict. I hope not, because after that, uh, we just had a, a big drop. And we don't, I don't expect that for, for, for the global economy. But I think and I believe in a constant and, and firm growth. Mm -hmm. I see. I see. Thank you. Uh, let me look. We have one more question from anonymous user. Uh, it is asked, uh, what is your budgeted export figures to China in uh, the next year in percentage? Well, we don't have budget. Uh, we just try to sell our material and uh, buyers that usually buy our material, we, we must attend them, okay? So we don't, I don't have budgets for US, Europe or China. Uh, it, it's just the market. Mm -hmm. I got, I got. Uh, so we have another uh, question from uh, also anonymously asked, um, do you think that drop of export of hot briquetted iron from Venezuela is one of the main contribution to growth of China demand for pig iron from Brazil? Well, it helped, of course, it helped a lot. I don't, I don't consider it as a main uh, contribution, but it helped, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems that we have the last question, but we'll see uh, what country is expected to be the price uh, setter uh, in the next year, uh, taking into account the recent developments, uh, the recent uh, 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 pick up in demand from Chinese customers. So China or USA still, as it was uh, traditionally. Sorry, I didn't get Katya. Could you? Uh, 
yeah uh, what country is expected to be as the price setter yeah uh, uh, as the trend setter in the global basic pig iron market in the nearest term of outlook okay well uh, i think that the market that is more interest for the pig iron and of course uh, will be a good fight between them if they need the pig iron uh, we believe that the, the, the market that pays a higher price. <laughs> uh, I see, I see. It seems that uh, we don't have any questions from audience. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your interaction. Mr. Fragosa, let me thank you on behalf of Steel Orbis uh, for your time to join us today. Uh, thank you very much for your great uh, presentation and for sharing with us your uh, outlook on the uh, pig iron market. Okay, thank you, Mr. Orbis, for this invitation again. Uh, thank you, all the audience. Thank you, Katya. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, take care, Mr. Pragorsa. Uh, I, I wish uh, to, to see you in person uh, as soon as possible. Next year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time to join us, uh, for your interest in our conference and for um, your support uh, this year. It is uh, much appreciated as never. Uh, I will hand you over to Mr. Morat Erelmas. Uh, take care, a good care of yourself and goodbye.